soul family. If it's meant to be, it'll be. Baby, just let it be. If it's meant to be, it'll be. But that doesn't mean, oh, if it's meant to be, it'll come to me. Listen, if you ride with me, we'll see where this thing goes. And if it's meant to be, it'll be. But as long as you're with me, we can take the whole world on. And he's saying, come on, ride with me, baby. Let's see where this thing goes. Whoop! I had the most amazing dreams. The most amazing dreams. Hope you guys had a nice night. I was so sleepy, and it always happens when dreams come on. First of all, before we get going, I want you guys to choose. We're doing only three today. We're going to do the yogi, the master who's gone to the mountain. Here we see the happy Buddha. And he's backed by a crystal mountain. And he's got a heart of rainforest jasper. And he's got amethyst protecting him and keeping him calm. On this really cool river stone that I've got. Um, and it, you know, it's a bummer that I, I wonder why I did that. Oh, because see all the, all the crystal quartz? There's circles all inside this and I'm having him sit on that. I know why, because the quartz, crystal clear quartz amplifies everything. So everything that he needed was being amplified while he was on his mountain. And now when you go into the mountain, that means when you go to, you know, when the great wave comes, the great wave of emotion, go to the mountain, which would represent isolation, going in within, not isolation as in pull yourself away from the entire planet, although maybe sometimes it is. It's definitely about going in and meditating. The mountain is spirit. The mountain is strength and you notice how he rested his back against this mountain that was completely filled with crystals and red rock. I love that because this is a crystal that I was given in the seven sacred rivers in Sedona. It's beautiful. If you see this in the light, it's incredible, the crystals. So he knows the power of crystals. He carries crystals with him and uh, he has them on his work desk. He's very always has been connected to crystals. He's kept in an amethyst cave where he's safe and calm. And the rainforest, it's time to go on safari, get into the jungle. You gotta deal with the jungle of this world, right? Rainforest, think about it, emotions, right? Forest, I mean, I could go on and on. This is a beautiful crystal cluster. Talk about a power cluster, right? This is super strength. I just got superhuman strength is what I just heard. It's beautiful, I love this. I won't do, I won't put this apart. I, I won't put this into anything, like make a make anything of it. I was going to. If I were to get a really incredible, and I just heard in my head, when I get the most perfect, beautiful crystal base of a different stone, a, a colored stone, it's going to be very, very, very important. It's going to be very special. And then this is going to sit on that. But for now, this is my amplifier. I have it sitting in the hands in front of my um, shaman stone. And it, it points towards me and it charges everything. It amplifies. When I go to sleep at night, I will show you guys. My best friend Diane gave me this velvet, beautiful velvet cover. I cover my cards and they are protected and they are charged. And this is what charges and protects. The, the intention is to charge and protect all of that, this desk and me. Um, send me the messages from spirit. It also is, this is for you guys because it clears and, and amplifies everything that spirit needs for me to bring forward for you. So there's that one. And then there's this incredible little sh coral, piece of coral. I love this. To me, this is like the flower of life. This is, I, I love this. It's happy, it's simple, and yet it's incredibly intricate. Look at that. Sounds like someone I love. Happy, simple, but very intricate, very deep. You can be simple and very, very deep. Spirit says, keep it simple, stupid, right? Look at all the intricacies. Look how this, this is the underestimated, right? You would look at that and like all that's going on there and you would look at that and then you see this. This is so massively underestimated. The flower of life. Look at all of the twists and turns that we take in, in our journey. Imagine we start out here and we go, there's a little cul-de-sac, whoops, learn my lesson there, bam. Go over here, oop, bump, bump, bump as you make your way through the maze, right? It's, it's an endless loop that goes around and around. It also reminds me of the infinity symbol because it, there's no beginning and there's no end, which is like us. God, I love this. So what it's going to be is, what does he have to say to you? 
whatever the divine masculine is in your life, whoever it is, if it's your father, if it's your ex-husband, if it's your lover, if it's your partner, if it's your, um, whoever this represents, um, the male aspect in your life, what do they have to say to you? And what do you have to say to them? And what does spirit say to both of you? Because it's advice for all. Now, what's interesting is two people could be looking at this same person and thinking that message is for them. So spirit will define which message is for who. And spirit will define which message is for who as well here. And your, your body should know. If you get a chill, you know the message is yours. If you get a warm flush, it's a negative for you. This will be positive for all of us. All right. So, um, I have to hold you guys sideways because I'm charging my phone and, uh, I will timestamp so that you, um, can skip ahead if you want, if you choose to. Um, what I've been finding for most people is that they're not, not everyone's listening <clears throat> to all the messages so far, um, from all the feedback that I get. <clears throat> and, um, I love the feedback you leave on, on my YouTube channel. And please like and share these videos and subscribe to them, to the video, so then you get everything brought to you. I have still have people asking me, you know, where are the readings um, because they haven't subscribed. So um, please do so and share so that other people that are awakening can get the messages as well. We're going to be working with the Romance Angels today. We're going to be working with the, uh, hmm, oh, first I got to let Lily out. All right, baby girl. I was going to say the vampire deck, and so I guess I am. Out you go. As soon as she said hello. So Lily represents a vampire. A spoiled, pretty, selfish little girl. That doesn't give a whole lot back. <laughs> but I love her. So it could be a, a family member that's just very, very spoiled. You love them, but they're narcissistic. That's my little girl. Okay. <clears throat> or it could, yeah, it's a family member, cousin stepsister, mother, um, makes it difficult, you know, when you love them and you want to be there for them, but they just make life so difficult for you. But that's, you know, our family are our biggest uh, teachers, right? <clears throat> so the decks that we're working with are the Fairy Tarot Oracle, Le Vampire, uh, courtesy of Lily, and the Romance Angels. Not everyone is going to get the same message, okay? And we're going to be using my little cards. And I uh, can't remember. See, that was good that I stopped myself. I can't remember what I was talking about. And it's best. I probably was going to say something I shouldn't have said. So, dreams last night. Ooh, fun, fun, fun. I dreamed with my mama Sherry. You know what's interesting? Is my mother is in spirit, right? My mother died almost 11 years ago, I think. I don't even know how long ago it is. I, I blocked the, the, the time out of my mind. And my mom shows up in my dreams when it's really important for me to pay attention. And you know, my mom hasn't shown up for, for a while. And she showed up last night. And, or actually early this morning. You know, the best dreams are always early, early in the morning before you get up. And, uh, my, and what was cool was my mama Sherry was there and my mother was meeting her for the first time. I figured this is an easier way to do this because these are so hard to shuffle. Um... And it was really exciting for me. And what's really weird is nobody else in my dream looks who, like they're supposed to look. They always look like someone else. And I know that my Mama Sherry is not representing my Mama Sherry. It's representing somebody who is like, has, a, has that loving, nurturing, nurturing energy um, who is not my mother. And it can be, a, um, I mean, I know who it is. It represents, it actually represents me. She represents me. And I didn't realize that. But, so what was so cool was that my mother was there. And in my dream, I was excited that she um, was meeting my mom. And we were in my mom's, I mean, my mama Sherry's town. And what's interesting is my mama Sherry has a farm. So it also represents somebody else, um, I know in my particular life, who is not a mother, who is like a mother. Like my mama is like a mother to me. She was like my mom and I love her. And she's not my relative. So it was that person. So it was the two people I loved most meeting. And I thought it was so, so I was so excited. And I was, and, and they always show me my mama Sherry living on a farm. And they don't. So um, I know it represents somebody different. And 
I'm trying to, in my dream, even in my subconscious mind, I'm trying to, to reconcile uh, Sturgeon Bay, where we live, you know, with the fact that there's a farm there and my, and my mama Sherry and my mom, and it doesn't quite fit together because I'm trying to, um, you know, put it with what I know. And I, and as I said, my mama Sherry doesn't live on a farm, so I was trying to fit in to the other person's dream, the person that I was watching. And, uh, but what's so interesting is I, uh, I see my mama Sherry so crystal clear. I see her son, Troy. I see um, my uncle Phil. I see my Papa Terry. Whenever I see my surrogate family, I'm shown them crystal clear, like as they are. It's like I'm with, I love that. I didn't even see my mom's face. I just knew it was my mom. And I didn't see the other ones that were represented, but that's because, it's because they aren't, aren't to be shown that way. They are just to be shown to me as that's who they are, the, the type of per, not the, who they are, but the type of, uh, who, who, the type of person, how can I explain it? Like say if it's a mother or a father, that's who it represented. And if I were to be seeing their face, that would confuse me because it isn't them. But it was really cool. And then I wake up to this recipe that my mama Sherry posts and it was my auntie Elaine's favorite, it was my, my pie that she used to make for me, strawberry rhubarb custard pie. It was my favorite in the entire world. And she was my mom's best friend, my Auntie Elaine. And she ended up being my friend. We ended up being really, really good friends. And then my mom died. Um, and my Auntie Elaine and my mother, they were of the same religion. And my Auntie Elaine for a while went away from it, but now she's back. And she's in a, you know, not really in my life, but I love her. I grew up with her and I love her. And uh, Wow, one of the cards literally flew out and said to you guys, this is your card, so that's pretty exciting. And that was the one from, um, from Spirit. So, um, it was just really cool how they showed me things, how, uh, God, just so many things came up, and it was just, I love my dreams. And they're really confusing at first, but when I get a few minutes to, to sit down and look at them, and they become clear, man... Spirit is so powerful how they bring me messages. It just shows me that no matter what anybody tries to do, any kind of manipulations or block, nothing's going to stop what's meant to happen. Nothing, 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 nothing. All right, guys, here we go. At 12 minutes and 30 seconds in, here we have pile one, pile two, pile three. This is the masculine, this is the feminine, this is spirit's advice. So here we go. My desk is getting so full with all of my crystals. You want to talk about positive energy? Dang. All right. So we're going to not put that first because everybody seems to want that one first. So you don't always get what you want. All right. So. Oh, I like the picture of this. Remember the other day when I spoke about this and I said in my dreams I, I saw this person in my life who I thought was, I always felt was my friend. She was much younger and she was very narcissistic, I realized in the end. I had to end up breaking away from her as far as, uh, she was very toxic. She was, uh, it's too bad, very beautiful person, but very, very toxic person. And uh, I, I remember in the dream, and I probably wasn't me, I was probably somebody else who has somebody like this one in their life. And I said, I'm, I'm tired of being played like a violin. <laughs> and there's the black cat my mama sherry knows how to play the violin my surrogate mom i love my mama sherry so she's not playing me like a violin but whoever she represents in somebody else's life clearly she is because look at the look at the lightning shooting from up above her head um so there's storm clouds and there's a clash of beliefs and there's ideas and um I also get the message, and I'm going to read very, very differently, okay? Very, very differently. This is the male energy. So what I'm getting is the song, I don't practice Santeria. I don't got no crystal ball. So if you know the song, Santeria, <clears throat> I think I might just read, I'll see. I might just read the picture, pictures alone and... and I don't practice Santeria. I don't have a crystal ball. If I had a, I had a million dollars, so this person used to have a lot of money, but I spent it all. Somebody, if I could find that Heine and that Sancho, 
that she's found. I'd pop a cap in, cap in Sancho and I'd slap her down. So somebody has betrayed somebody else. A guy and a girl betrayed this person. And all I want to know, all I really want to say, I can't define. It's love that I need. My soul will have to wait until I get back and find that love of my own. Daddy's going to love one and all. I feel the break. I feel the break. Okay, so this one, this is the one that's hell-bent on revenge because of what these ones, these, somebody pulled a fast one on and, and it was somebody that um, was loyal. He thought was loyal to him. It should have been loyal to him. And he wants to pop a cap in that Sancho's ass. So he's after somebody. And uh, he's basically saying, baby, what I want to say is I've got mine. I'll make you. I'll make it. Yes, I'm going up. And if he knows what's good for him, he best go run and hide. Daddy's got a new 45. I won't think twice to stick that barrel straight down Sancho's throat. Believe me when I say I've got something for his punk ass. <laughs> ah, uh, what I really want, and there's only one way back, and I'll make it. So my soul will have to wait. So here's where you have to be pulled back in. So this person is saying, you played me like a violin. You played me like a fiddle. But I know. You think you underestimate me, but I'm connected to spirit and spirit has shown me. And this passion, this is not love that's coming from me. This is anger and it's in my hair. I'm a hothead and I got to tell you, you best run and hide because I know what's going on. Run for the hills. So that is the energy of ego. But that is a message being sent to Sancho and his girlfriend. The jig is up. The story's out. It's been revealed by spirit. It's very clear. But what spirit wants to do is discipline our ego. And it, it, it's difficult, especially if somebody's played you. So they're telling you, you you're lacking discipline right now. And in order to achieve your goal, you have to meditate that's why we've have this mountain you've got to go in you've got to calm yourself you're trying to achieve a goal you're trying to reach something and you need to visualize it and as this song said oh i'm going to make it back right i'm going to make it back but what they said at the end was what i want to say is there's one way back and i'll make it oh yeah but my soul will have to wait no that's not the truth because it's not for you to take karma upon yourself you allow spirit to handle it that black cat that sits next to you that's karma. A cat's name is karma. You don't en enact karma on anyone. Remember yesterday? Somebody's a little puppy comes up with a German shepherd and is playing, wants to throw a sock at you and, and, and jerk your chain, which is what they probably did, right? You're, you're going to drop that sock. You're going to drop the sock. You're going to let that puppy think he won. Who cares? Remember yesterday? You are the emperor. You command kingdoms. You don't have to waste your time with, with ridiculousness like that. That's, that's childish games. Remember Santeria, these stupid, these stupid uh, spells that they try and cast upon you and these, these, these games that they run on you, thinking you know, you're, you're taking advantage of your good nature and your innocence, not recognizing that you are so underestimated, and not to mention you're not alone. You've got spirit at your side constantly. So drop that, drop the end of your, your, drop your end of that sock and, and let that little ridiculous puppy go prancing off thinking he's one or she's one because this is a test for you. You've worked hard and, and, and you've been devalued and, and you've been put through stress and you've got a goal in mind and you, you can have that goal. It's in front of you. It's not maybe what you wanted and you may have to you know, do things that aren't fun, but you're being trained at this time. And you're thinking, hey, I've, I've been trained, I've been, I've been freaking running a marathon, I've been doing all this stuff and I got played. It's okay, because the discipline that's required of you right now is gonna result in the biggest breakthrough. There's a major part of your life that requires a change right now. And the brutal truth is that it's not gonna be easy. It's not easy and what you've been through is already hard but it's conditioning you so here it is you can't wait the storm clouds are there the lightning is already there you got to commit to this and you've got to have that discipline 
and build yourself stronger to carry you through and carry this plan through to completion and the blessings that come for it. This is something that you are creating for yourself and that power that you have and that action that you're going to take, it's going to come up again and again. So you've got the ability to create this program of yourself. You can stick to it and the pain's going to turn to pleasure. And that freedom and the strength that it gives you is going to so far outweigh the pain that you have had to endure because in all reality, even though it feels like it's gone on forever, it's short term compared to what you're going to get. Now, don't let the self-doubt compromise the potential that you have. This challenge that you face is going to go beyond what is comfortable, what you're going to like, but it's going to bring you everything you've ever wanted. So plan, create the structure, stick to the commitment, get rid of any doubt and any void that's there, any, any space that is taken up by doubt, fear or worry, you're going to fill that with confidence. You're going to ask, this is why you have, have your back up against the mountain. I've got my back up against the mountain. Yeah, but that mountain is pure crystal. It's time to go into the jungle. It's time to go on safari and shoot that lion. And I don't say that, um, that is completely metaphoric because I don't agree with hunting of any type. But I'm telling you, this is about roaring louder than that lion who's been manipulating, lying, and mistreating. Whatever that represents in your life. And keep the amethyst around you for protection and sit calmness. Keep yourself calm. You don't want to lose your head when, when people do shit like this. You need to keep calm. That's how you win. And then you walk away. You don't want this energy around you. You don't want anything to do with this energy. And they need to recognize you don't want anything to do with them. You're done. You recognize. You've ruled. Spirit's going to help you. Look how calm your cat sits next to you. This is a part of you. So call on the wisdom of the cat for independence, for flexibility, for curiosity, adventure. Cats are also very indifferent. They love who they want to love. You can't force a cat to love you. They're not, they're not like a dog. When you yell at a dog and tell a dog that they're bad, that they're bad, that they're bad, even if it's not anything they did, they will cower. Cat's going to flip you off. Call on the wisdom of the cat. Wow, this is, I didn't realize I gave everybody all of these. It's going to be a long reading. <clears throat> Red Riding Hood. Hmm, there's that black wolf. What's going on with Red Riding Hood? Hmm i got to think about this for a second. That black wolf is in front of... And red, why does Red Riding Hood have silver hair? Is that wisdom? Or is this an older person? Remember, or is this that shiny benevolent facade, the people that present themselves in silver? Let me figure out who this is at this time. Is this the grandma? Is this your grandma with the dark wolf in front? It's definitely a mature woman. There's blood. That, that cape it represents blood. So it could represent love. A grandmother's love. It could represent an, an, an a mature woman's love. It could also represent violence because of the blood and the dark wolf. And right then we got, so that's what it represents because we got that highlighted by the pinging. Anytime we get, anytime you get emphasis like that, you pay attention to what's being said. So there's violence. So it could have been violence in the child, in her childhood, whatever. She's attached to the family. Riding Hood loves her grandma, goes into the forest. The wolf is anyone and everyone who has ever preyed upon your innocence who saw you as a victim. They try to be your friend and they groom you and they do everything they can to overcome the suspicion that you have, but you have that suspicion, you already know. They give you false charm and false reassurance. I knew that that silver hair was false. So the road to grandma's house, that's your journey of life, right? And, and showing how you end up at grandma's house, showing eventually the age, you know, the possible time of age. So this is dangers about being a female with predators. 
Some of them are men that will stalk and groom their potential victims, but some of them are women who will stalk and groom men, young, innocent men. Some of them are women who will groom and stalk other women and men who will stalk and groom other men. They're predatory. They want to exploit the innocents. So that shows that there's something about humans, in humans, men and women. There is this instinct that makes you want to devour another. So this, this message is coming forward telling you the truth. They're, they're revealing something. That certain people are not who they seem to be, or who they say they are. And their actions are very manipulative and deceptive. So the ones that you're trusting at this time, they're grooming you. They're setting you up. You're like the sitting duck. They're grooming you to harm you. And you're innocent and you're giving trust to someone. So you feel vulnerable. So as we grow, we have to try to figure out and discern between ones who are elders with wisdom of that silver hair and the ones that we can trust and the ones that we can't. Interesting, you know, we're often, spirit says stay on your spiritual path. But in the world, people say, you know, stay on the path, the path. I never stay on the path. I always off-road. But everyone wants you to stay on the path, right? They don't want you to become wild. They don't want you to go your own way. They're afraid you're going to get hurt by predators, but sometimes the predators are on the path they, they expect you to follow. They also don't want you to be wild and natural of your own because they're trying to control you. So right now, Spirit's telling you, be very wary of who you give your trust to. Focus on what's in front of you right now, the task. You want to live a lifelong, a long, long productive life, a rewarding life. So be aware of your own ability, but also be aware of the issues you have about being distracted. That's why the, the crystal yesterday, I don't know how many of you went and listened to the, sec, the last part of, the, of yesterday's reading, but it was the barrel crystal, and that crystal helps you to keep on task and keep you focused from outside distractions if you have a difficult time holding attention. People are trying to distract you. You need that barrel crystal. I, need, I put my twin and myself in that crystal elixir. And I'm surrounding us in that. I am getting that stone. I will be getting that tomorrow. And I will be wearing it. I would advise you to do it as well. Because you are becoming distracted. You're getting diverted and you're losing your focus. And others are able to take advantage of you this way. And in, in, in a sense, we're doing that to ourselves. So be careful about who you trust. And be careful about not giving in to the temptations to become like that wolf. The one who was represented by the one playing the violin. I got played and now I want to fuck them over. No, you don't. Don't give in to that. You stay on your spiritual path. That'll bring out the best of you. And the path is long. Our path, we, I, I plan on being here a very long time. And going very, very far. My grandmother was 98. Her mother was 102. I plan on outliving both of them. And I have no doubt that I will. So I want to make it, so I'm not even halfway through my life. And I've got plenty of good in front of me. And I want it to be the best possible. So my, my path may not be out in the open where everybody else goes. I off-road all the time. I prefer it that way. And I'm not worried about the wolves because the wolves in my life, they're my friends. You that come forward as the wolves, you're pathetic, insignificant, nothing. I have the wolf pack on my side. And this is what you tell yourself. You have the wolf pack on your side. I'm speaking this way because this is my, um, this is, um, who am I coming through? I'm coming through as this person, as whoever picked this card. So I am protected. And right as I say that, I look out across and in the middle of those palm branches, right at the very top, there's a dove grooming itself. Do you see it? It's peaceful. The dove represents peace, taking a breath, pause, prophecy. You wouldn't believe what I watched today in my dream. So it was all prophetic. Guidance, right? And the, and the dove 
brings, remember the dove of peace? Brings an olive branch. You want peace. I choose peace. You need to choose peace. We are not going to be anyone's victim. We aren't anyone's victim. And we're not going to be a martyr. And we're not going to be the ones exacting karma. And we know we're protected. We have our life, we have our life partner right next to us. Our wolf protects us. The wolf pack. Nothing beats a wolf pack. They're true. So don't give in your to the temptation to be the dark wolf. That's the outcast. Stay safe. Remember the words and the actions. They don't tell us everything we need. They don't tell us everything about who we're going to meet. Our journey is, that's it. It's our journey. We have to journey forward. We don't know what's coming in front of us. It's our instinct. So it's not what people say to us and it's what people, not what people tell us because a lot of times it isn't even the truth. Pay attention to your instincts. Don't be delayed or diverted. Remember who you are and where you're going. So this has gone from, this person has in this story represented several people. The wisdom that you have learned from spirit, the gray-headedness is wisdom. It represents you growing, aging, but in wisdom. It also represents, look at a very young person who presents themselves as somebody that they're not. Deceptive person. Know how to, to discern who is who. This is about sexual maturity. This is about staying focused and mature and aware. This is about don't be deceived by appearances. This is a young girl wearing old and grandmother's hairstyle, old dress. Also, the wolf was dressed up as, as the female. Remember? Think about that. So there is a wolf that's a female. And there is an older woman that's pretending to be a younger person. Don't be deceived by appearances. Do not allow yourself to be groomed by people who are trying to be your friend and they flatter and they give you gifts and they want that's how you trust them. And then they get information from you and then they stab you in the back. Have a mature viewpoint on this right now. Don't be childish and play into their game. Give your relationship a chance and work on your partnership. Whatever's been going on, it's worth it. Whatever effort you have to make, there could be issues. Everyone has issues. But Spirit's saying that these can be worked through and healed. So they want you to commit to the relationship. And that's the only way that you're going to have success at it is by saying, you know, I'm committed to, to, to this working. I know how to use the energy. You can take the energy that you have and put it into a new relationship and start all over and go through all everybody else's new stuff and all their annoyances and get to know all that. Or you can take that same energy and put it into your relationship and heal it. And you will understand also that you had something to do with this. So work towards it. And let go of the whatever you're vibrating from, whatever negative frequency you're vibrating on at this time so you don't attract that similar situation. If you have been through something negative, let go of that kind of stuff, that thought, that, that, and, and the, any toxic people that are around you because, because of that energy, you will draw to you similar painful situations in the future. You don't want that. So there's hope for this partnership. Love is there. If you want to go to a counselor, that could help you. Um... Maybe a professional could help you with what areas of dysfunction are there and send you both in, you know, a healthy direction. Because somebody's feeling very overwhelmed right now. I get that. I see it. I watched it. It's understandable. I would be overwhelmed too. And I've had the same energy and I have had spirit to help me every single day because I get to the place where I want to kill everybody. I'm angry and pissed off and I want to exact my own revenge and then I feel, you know, and then I think, and then spirit talks me down. I'm an Aries dragon. <laughs> I want to do it all myself and I want to kick your ass and I want to watch you as I do it. That's the ego in me. I've had to tame the tiger within me 
I got to tell you, I've got some really sharp claws and I can fillet people really quick. My tongue works quickly. My mind is like a, a steel trap. I know how to play a game, but I don't want that energy. So I allow you to play your game. I allow you. Play it out. So let it go. You're overwhelmed. Relax and recognize that this is worth saving. The love that you have for the one that you love. Because there may be, as I said, there may be different people looking at the same person thinking this message is for them. Well, the message for everyone is that this person is overwhelmed right now. And they deserve to be loved. And looking at the color on this woman's eyes and the top that she's wearing, this person sees and carries the truth because that blue is truth. It's also Archangel Michael's protection. So he loves the one who speaks the truth and who sees the truth. She doesn't see with her physical eyes. She sees with her third eye. That's who he's in love with. He could also be, um, of course, the opposite, right? Female, male, whoever carries this um, feminine energy at this time. So this person is overwhelmed. They're probably both overwhelmed. And they're, they, they uh, deserve to see this relationship helped. And spirits got their wings wrapping around both of them. So take some time and go into meditation and trust what spirit's telling you. Bam. Bam. At 36 minutes in, we go to the power crystal cluster. This is for the feminine energy. <clears throat> Primal. Ooh, I love this one. I was literally watching, I don't know if you guys watched the, if you have been able to watch the weekly video reading for this week, but uh, this is, uh, I watched a belly dancer. And this is about connecting. This is connecting with, with the raw, organic, real. This is the wild within you. I like this. This is allowing. Remember how people don't want you to be wild? They want you to stay on the path. They want you to be sweet and innocent and, and be exactly where they want you to be. But this is about connecting deep within to the primal part of you, sacred dance, following your instincts. But it's connecting with the ancient ones. She's not afraid of those skeletons there. This is somebody who is, knows how to hold their body. They know that through their body they communicate. What is the message that somebody is communicating to you with what they're wearing? What is the energy saying that emanates from this person? How do they behave? Do they show their body off? Do they want tons of attention? Do they enjoy? I keep, what I'm thinking right now is she's on the move. She, she knows the way her body moves. She loves the way her body moves. She loves when everybody's watching her. And she loves it when she says to you that she loves nobody but you. Think about that. There's somebody that, that's, that's a man eater. Energy. We, we're talking about male or female. What is the energy that they emit? Are they somebody who's a scrapper? Are they somebody who's gossiping? Are they somebody who wants to fight? See, that's why we want to um, temper what we have within us. We want what, what would love say, what would love do? The one who is gossiped against, who, who is betrayed, who is groomed, who, who, and who knows it, and doesn't retaliate and give back in kind. What kind of energy is that? That's the energy you want. That's the energy that comes from... A pure crystal, right? This crystal has no color. It has no impurities. This crystal is connected to truth only. Look at the pink that shone when the light hit it. Wow. This this one has love. Looks to me like a little bra. See her little bra that she's wearing? That fits right over top and it's the color of the heart. Love. And she wears it in her hair too. She's adorned. So the energy, pay attention to the energy that... that Somebody can be very beautiful in front of you. They can even be dressed very classy. But what is the energy that they emit? Man or woman? And when you dance, think about when you dance. Even if you're... Wait, wait. If you get up there and you dance and you don't know what the hell you're doing, it's embarrassing. You're very self-conscious. Right? But if you get up there and you dance and you do a really great job and you feel confident, confident with yourself, it's fun to watch. Dancing is an expression. 
we're, we're talking about all different messages here. So now we're going to go to dance. Think about dance. I love to dance. I put the music on and I dance in my room. I don't dance in front of a bunch of people. I'm in here by myself, but I love it. But I do love to dance. I've always loved to dance. And I never dance with a partner. I've always danced by myself. And I'm not in, interested really in anybody there. I just wanted the music. because when you And I close my eyes when I dance because then you go into the music. And it becomes a part of who you are. It's an expression. And this is, when you close your eyes and you dance, it, it be, you become the music. You're not self-conscious. I, I like to dance with a hat or glasses so no one sees me and I don't feel very self-conscious. I don't like to dance where I'm watched, personally. And when you dance when you're unwatched, or if you dance and you don't care if anybody's watching, that's beautiful. Like when I watched that belly dancer at the, at the coast, her skin had been, you know, weathered from the sun and, and, and age and she got up there and she had this little skimpy outfit on and she was dancing like she didn't care who was watching she was in the music she was free and she was beautiful and I'm looking that dove is just sitting on that branch just resting just staring at me it's so beautiful <clears throat> the other day um Two songs came on. They were hysterical. They were, um, what the hell's his name? Um, <laughs> I can't think of who it is. Ricky Martin. She bangs. <laughs> she bangs. It came on. I haven't heard it in a hundred years. I got up and I danced. I danced until I was sweating. I was soaking wet. I was so sore. I danced for hours. I just kept putting it on repeat. She bangs. It made me, it, I came alive. My body moved. And I felt powerful and I felt strong and it felt amazing. It became primal. Now, when people dance from their soul, have you ever heard like in the, um, you watch the, the natives and they dance, they dance and, and then the screams that come, it's like a primal scream, right? Roar, raw, amazing. This is the primal quality that you have within you. It's you coming to life through movement, through your senses. A time when you don't care about what anybody else says or does and no one's holding you back. Reconnecting and connecting, connecting with the ancient ones, the ancestors, with, 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 with who you, the, the depth of who you are and where you came from, from your lineage. I'm Celtic, I'm Welsh. I was probably connecting with the, who knows? I was just, it was insane. It was crazy. I'm telling you, I put that music, I just put it on repeat and went on and on and on and on. I started before sunset and I danced outside on my patio in the dark. It was amazing because I had it on my headset. Nobody could see me. It was amazing. It felt amazing too. So right now, your body is telling you it loves movement and it's asking you to dance freely, wildly with everything in you. Don't feel self-conscious when moving or dancing. And don't feel like you're being observed from the outside and watched or judged. Let go of that and feel the music. This isn't about putting yourself up on display for everyone else to watch you. This is for you. This is to allow that inside of you to come out. That wild part of yourself that spirit wants you to remain untamed and remain free. Spirit wants you to express that through a dance. I've always said, I wish we could have like a a class where we dance with music like that and you just free danced around the room. That's the exercise class. That's what I do. It's amazing. That's your message. It's just a totally awesome message. I love it. I'm going to do it. It's my message, right? This is for the female. Freaking love it. The juniper tree. Deception. Ugh, I knew it. I got this yesterday. Deception. There's a lot of deception going on right now. It's really sad, you know? It really is sad. So here you see this woman, and I love juniper trees. They smell amazing. And she's standing beneath, beneath this juniper tree. It's in her own garden. And this one, she's wanting a child. That's what she's asking for. But she's seen her own death. This is, a, she, this is a vampire. She's asked her husband to bury her under this juniper tree. So this is the death, right? The blood coming from her sleeves. And this is underneath the juniper tree. So she's asked to be buried there. 
And as she, her stomach grows because she is pregnant, she gives birth to a boy and she holds him to her and she loves him. But on the third day of her life, she passes away. And she's buried underneath, underneath that tree by her husband. He loves her so much and he grieves for her loss. He cares for this child, he loves this child. But after a while, he takes a new wife and she gives birth to a daughter. That new wife now starts to resent that boy because he's gonna inherit the father's money, everything, right? She wants it and she wants it for her and her child. So this resentment inside of this, this nasty, wicked person is festering inside of her. So she offers her daughter an apple and sends her out to play. And this evil is just rising inside of her. So she calls in this stepson and in with this twisted anger. And, and, and she feels self-righteous in, in this. She believes that she and her daughter should have because that's, I am the wife now. We should be left this money, right? She believes that she should have what she sees. She has this righteous indignation and she hates this boy. He's her downfall. So she gives him an, an apple too. And she says, inside, she's looking in the corner. She's looking in the corner of the room and there's a box. And she says to him, I've got the most beautiful apple for you but it's in this box. And she reaches her hand into the box, but then he goes to reach into the box to get the apple that he feels she's gonna give to him. She's pretending to be giving him something beautiful and special. And she brings the lid down on his head and severs his head. Then she calls her daughter in and tells her to ask her stepbrother for an apple and if he doesn't give it to her she's supposed to hit him so she asks for an apple from her brother who's dead she doesn't realize that he's dead and because he doesn't respond she hits him and his head falls on the floor she's hysterical because she thinks she's killed her brother and she runs to the mother who says, oh, no worry, don't worry, we'll, we'll make this right. What a bitch. What a fucking bitch this mother is. How could you do that to your own child and allow your own child to believe that you have done something horrible, that, that they have done something horrible to their brother when it was you who did it? She's so scared, this little girl. She, first of all, loves her brother and is so frightened that she's gonna be punished, and of course her soul. I mean, God will never forgive me. I killed my brother. I loved my brother and I killed him. And then when the father comes home, the stepmother says that the boy's gone away to stay with his uncle. And she serves the husband a stew made of his body, her, his son's body. This is a gruesome story. And the daughter, so filled with remorse, takes her brother's bones from the mother and puts them to rest under this beautiful juniper tree. And she's crying and crying. And as she cries, a bird comes from the tree and it sings and it starts telling the story of the boy dying at the hands of the stepmother. And the, and the stepsister was crying for him. That bird flies and it sings that song and it takes it to the goldsmith who gives the bird a golden chain He's so moved by the story that this bird tells. He's just like, oh my God. And he hands this beautiful gold chain to the bird. And that bird sings the song to the shoemaker. And the shoemaker gives the bird red shoes. And then he goes to the miller. And the, the miller gives the bird a millstone. And then the bird returns to that juniper tree and sings that song again and again and again. The father goes out to see who is singing such a beautiful song. And that golden chain falls upon his neck. The father tells everyone, this beautiful bird gave me this gorgeous chain. And again, the bird sings and the 
stepsister goes out to see if it's true, and those shoes, they fall towards her. She smiles for the first time since her brother died. She has the red shoes, the father has the gold chain, and the stepmother, she's so pissed off, she's inside. First of all, now she's scared, <clears throat> and she's feeling guilty, and she wants that bird to stop singing that damn song. So she runs outside, and she's trying to find that bird, but the, the millstone, it falls upon her, and it crushes her into the earth. So her bitterness and her anger and her life is all over in one fell swoop. And the father and the stepsister cry out and the dust from the earth rises. And when it does, no longer is that bird there. But the boy, with a look of joy on his face, they've been brought back together. And they go inside and the bones and the body of that evil, evil woman rest beneath that juniper tree. So when this comes, this message shows you that you've been carrying this great, great burden and there's been such a responsibility and you've been carrying this sadness. But that sadness lies with another person and you need to let go of believing that everything is your fault and understand that you have a good heart. Spirit doesn't want you to lose hope. They want you to keep know, doing what you know is right to do, what's compassionate. And soon, the one you love most is going to be returned to you. And that parting and that sadness that you experienced, it's due to a third party. Do the right thing, and the love you feel that you have lost is going to return to you. Sorry, this is really personal for me. I've already watched this whole see this whole story and I know who everybody is. And this is how spirit works with me. To tame the Aries dragon and the tiger that wants to rip the shit out of these people who did this. I know who you are. I've known all along. And this is how spirit works with me and reminds me the difference between you and me. And that my heart is good. This teaches us do not act out of anger or resentment. And it teaches you that greed will evaporate. It will be dissolved by spirit. It asks you not to be impulsive. It shows you that compassion is rewarded. It speaks about blame being put onto one when it wasn't the blame of that one, but of the other. It talks about these cunning people at first they were cunning and deceiving, and I thought they got away with it, but it shifts to blame. Magic will reveal the truth as it did to me this morning. I can't even begin to tell you what spirit showed me. I was even given names, shown who was who, who did what. And the one I've loved all along was as innocent as snow as I was always shown. It talks about the return to life after cruelty. It talks about how love and tenderness is going to be the savior for everything. And it talks about that beautiful juniper tree, that beautiful blue tree. How trees in nature have this powerful magic to heal. I'm thinking about the scent, juniper. I have essential oil, the juniper scent. It's my favorite smell. It's my absolute favorite. It's always been my favorite. It's so amazing how spirit pulls things together, right? When I was in Wisconsin, my friend's mother owned a gift store and there was a room spray and it was juniper. And it's my favorite smell, always has been. And it talks about the innocence of children being reclaimed, the ones who were mistreated. And it talks about resurrection and a second chance at life. You may have feel, felt like you were killed, like you were dead. Someone may have felt like they were lost to you, that they were dead, but there's a resurrection. This is amazing. This reading is amazing. I need to go on a retreat after this reading. Oh, wow. And this is true love. This is the romance of a lifetime. Oh, man. This is, this is divinely protected love. 
Clearly in this reading, it's been shown that no matter what anyone has done, even though there's been pain and separation and time lost, no one will come between true love. For anyone who hasn't experienced the same horrible story that my twin and I have experienced, this message to you is saying that there is true love for you. And if you had a question about a specific person, this is validation that that person's feelings are real and they are genuine and decent. They have genuine love for you and any issues that you have can be overcome. Especially if you're able to express your feelings in a kind, compassionate, forgiving, loving way. This is a time to have honest conversations to pour your true feelings out, express your love. Even if you're uncomfortable, even if there's things that you have to talk about that, that make you, make your skin crawl. Now, if you are not in a relationship and you're looking for a relationship, this is assuring you that love is on its way for you. Spirit wants you to be faithful. That's why that dove sat on that branch out there patiently. That's prophecy. That's true soulmate connection. And it's also about being peaceful and gentle. And remember, it's a dove of peace. I choose peace. So when my body is filled with anger and rage and hurt, how can you hurt somebody like that? How can you hurt the one that you're supposed to love? How can you hurt the one that I love? But I can't focus on that. That dove sat on that branch and said, be peaceful, show compassion. The dove is cooing right now outside. You probably can't hear it. It's very light, but I hear it. And in the place of the dove, right now on that same ranch, and you aren't going to be able to see it because it's in the, in the shadows, is a yellow warbler. The yellow warbler sings a joyful song, just like that bird sang that, that tale. Because I know my twin is watching this, and I know now he knows the truth. And who did what? And that he's also being asked to remember his loving, gentle, peaceful nature. And when you forgive, it doesn't mean you need to allow them back into your life. That's a choice. But for you, spirit wants you to take care of yourself. Don't compromise. Don't settle for anything less than the best. Anything less than what you deserve. Treat yourself with excellent care tenderly because if you love yourself and I don't mean ego love you know spoil pampered rotten like that beautiful little cat that I own that I love that's spoiled rotten and doesn't really do anything for anyone else <laughs> I see that yellow warbler it's so bright the color yellow that's happiness that's new beginnings that's growth focus on all of the positive things and and treat yourself in that way the love that that you want to give yourself is a love that causes you to, to send that vibration out of love. Send the vibration out, not of vindictiveness, not of, of, of getting even, not of holding on to anger and resentment, but of, of allowing that to go away because you don't want to carry that bullshit in your life. You want to have that bright, happy, yellow vibrancy that like the sun sends out, that brings about growth. And you want to be the sunshine that people want to be around. Remember that lady? In that town I told you about, <clears throat> somebody said to me, I think I was laughing and I was singing and dancing, and somebody said, isn't she just a little ray of sunshine? <clears throat> and uh, that person that didn't like me said, yeah, doesn't it make you just want to slap that smile off her face? And I thought, wow. And it's funny because it didn't hurt my feelings when, I, when, when she said it. I really thought, wow, you really showed who you are. And you don't even realize. That's why you dress in black, because you're like the little black rain cloud. You're so sad. What happened in your life that makes you so dark and so sad and so cruel to other people? Why are you so envious? We don't want that energy. We want to hold this loving energy. These two are dressed in white and cream. These colors are light. And, and, the, and the sash is red, passion. And, and the color blue around the throat, truth. <clears throat> you want to come from that place. You want to... You want to tame the, the tiger within you, the Aries dragon. <laughs> and you want to emanate this kind of love. Because then that's who you draw to you. You draw that. If you, if you hang around that and you emulate that and you send that out, that's what you draw towards you. And then you have a foundation of a true 
not only love, loving relationship, but a friendship. Two people who cherish who they, who they are, everything about them. What a beautiful, beautiful love story. This love story is going to end up really, really fantastic, and it's going to go on for many, many years. And in order for that to happen, we need to cultivate that loving attitude and energy. And we have to let go and walk away from the negative and the toxic. I said this morning, I feel sorry for that woman. I feel sorry for the daughter too. In my case, it was a brother and a cousin. <clears throat> I feel sorry for it. I mean, I feel sorry for everybody that was done wrong. But you got to look at people like that and think how awful to be you. I wouldn't want to be you. See you. I wouldn't want to be you. Right? God. Can you imagine going through life like that? And check this out. Passion. Look at that sash around her waist. And that sash around his throat. Matching. Passion. This is real. There is true passion in this relationship. And you know what the real crime would be? Is if everything that happened and any kind of fear or doubt caused them to not speak their truth and come forward because this is the love of a lifetime. I carry upon my wrist that. You are the love of my life, babe. I know that. I have been married before, but I've waited my whole life for this. I've been through a lot in my life, and this is my prize. This is true love, and that's what everyone should hold out for. Don't ever settle for anything less than true love. I've never loved anyone the way I love this man, ever. That's what you want. And look at the crown of gold upon his head. He said, life's tough, wear a helmet. And he's got it on his head and he's protected. And that is gold. That crown is gold of worth. It's precious metal. And she knows it. His sword is at his side. He's not out there swinging. He carries it. This is a gentle, peaceful warrior. This is the happy Buddha. This is the, we walk with a big sword and a big stick, but it's at the side. And he's protective and, of her and loving, and she leans into him. This is a beautiful, beautiful, look at that, divinely guided and divinely protected. Nothing is going to get in this way. This shadow here does not even get in their way. They don't even see it. All they see is each other. No matter what you've done. What a beautiful. Wow, that was an amazing message. At one hour and two minutes in, we go to the final message from Spirit. Gosh, that was amazing. The flower of life. Things are blossoming. All right. Look at that journey. Everything everybody's gone through. The intricacy. The twists and turns. And Holy crow. Hell the sacks we got stuck in and had to get our way out. It's like the maze, right? It's like a labyrinth. The monster within. There's that one. I'm tired of being played like a violin. Internal struggle, personal challenges, wanting to improve. But this one, this speaks of this wolf, this beautiful silver wolf, who feels like he needs to improve, who needs to be better. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy, says this wolf. Completely incorrect. Completely incorrect. Wow, the story here. This is about a young man and woman who are driven from their home. This kind of reminds me of Hansel and Gretel. They're in an enchanted land. And the brother Hold on a second. I'm getting two stories mixed together. So spirit's telling me something else. There's a brother and it's okay, hold on. Are they the same? The brother and the sister? Brother and a sister, they're like brother and sister. They feel like family, they're one. Okay, these two, they feel like one. They feel like family, they're comfortable with each other. Okay, so internal struggle, personal challenges, wanting to improve. So there's this wolf is wild, he's a predator. He's got the ability to hurt. 
this woman, she's playing a sad song. It speaks of moments of weakness when your defenses are down. Sometimes when you're, you're, when you're weak, you cry. Sometimes when you're weak, you snap. You get nasty, right? When, when, you're, when you're tired, you get cranky. Some people cry when they get tired. When I get really, really angry and I'm frustrated, when I get very, very frustrated, I cry. I cry when I'm touched emotionally, but I cry when I'm really, really frustrated. That's when tears come to my mind. It's because when you're frustrated, you, you can't see the, the way out. You, you, it's a moment of weakness. You, you can, you're, you're struggling. But also, when you're very, very tired, you haven't had any sleep, your body is weak, right? And, and you get, people get on your nerves very easily and, you, and you'll, you'll lash out and you snap. It's hard to find your balance. So Spirit's saying we have this in us both. So right now, you are both sitting there internally struggling. The wolf is saying, I've got this ability in me. I know that I can hurt you. But she also knows that she can use her tongue and she can hurt as well. So this is about recognizing that we are lovable even though we have this within us. We all have this within us. We don't want to put our focus on our, our, the, the aspects of us. I showed you guys. I mean, you probably could hear both sides come in out of me. I, have, I love with everything in me. I love hard. I play hard. I love hard. I, I work hard. I study hard. I think hard. And I have an aspect inside of me. I'm telling you, my tongue can be like a razor. And I can hurt you really, really badly. And I can go after you. I'm telling you, I'm little. But my brother is six. God, what is my brother? Six one and 340. 45, 350 pounds, and I've thrown my brother across a room. I'm 5'2", 5'2 and a half and 125 pounds. And I have thrown my brother across the room when I was in a rage. He pinned me down under a mattress and I was terrified and I threw him across the room. So I can have, when, I, when, it, when it comes out in me, superhuman strength and it can be ugly. I have been in a fight one time and I was in a physical fight once. One time, I wasn't the type of, I'm not a scrapper, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not a bro ho. I'm not a girl who likes to get into fights. I don't do that. Even, you know, when I was younger and I had that vicious tongue, I, I don't do that. But it was senior day in high school, and this girl that was jealous of me lured me. You know what was sad was she had talked a friend who was a friend of mine, somebody that, somebody that was my friend. She talked this person into luring me out there. And when I got there, I got jumped. And this is what's happened right now, and I know that, that there's a friend of mine who's been talked into doing something, and they've hurt me really bad. I know that. And they jumped me. This girl jumped me. And I, I didn't know what was coming. And I was hit in the head with a bottle of Tyrolia wine. I don't know if you've ever seen a bottle of Tyrolia wine, but it's got a handle, and it's about this tall from the desk. It's about, it's about almost a foot tall, and it has a handle. And she swung that bottle and hit me in the back of the head and knocked me out. And I was on the ground, and I woke up to her on my face, beating my face in. And her fingernails were filed into points. I, I was, my face was just beaten so I couldn't even feel the pain. I was hit so many times. And something happened and I thought, oh, I know, her, her fingernails started to go to my eyes. She was trying to gouge my eyes out. And everyone stood around us in a circle. They were her friends. They all watched, cheering her on. Wow, I'm watching a dove fly like, like, like that dove all of a sudden was like a hawk flying through the air. And that's what happened to me. I thought, she's not going to get my eyes. And if I'm going to die, I'm going to go down fighting. And I grabbed her fingers and her hands, and I slammed her hands down against the ground. And, and I don't know, the this, this strength came out in me. And I got on top. And when I got on top, they pulled me off of her. And then she jumped me again. And every time I got on top, they pulled me off. But I took her hands, and that's the only thing I could do. Was I, I just felt like I, I, I didn't know how to fight. I, every time I swung out and hit, I could barely miss. I mean, barely hit. I hit her a couple of times, but I, I didn't... I, all I know is finally I stood on the ground and she ran into the house and I was shaking. I was standing there and I had her hair, this huge hunk of her hair, long hair wrapped around my hand. And I got into my car and I drove home. And I was, I'm telling this story because I know somebody who's had this happen and I know what the parents did. So you need to hear this story. So please bear with this story. I drove home and I was dressed in an Angora sweater, a blue Angora sweater. I had a pearl necklace and I had a ring that was my sister's ring my little sister who had died. 
that ring was gone. I never found that ring again. It fell on the ground. She didn't rip the pearl necklace, which was amazing, but, but I, my, I got to the front door. My mother opened up the door and saw me. I don't know what I looked like. I hadn't seen myself yet. And she saw my face and she slapped my face because she, she saw that I had been fighting and she said, we don't do that. I, 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 don't, know what, I don't know what overcame her. Maybe she, it, she, she reacted. I don't know what happened, but I went to my room and I looked in my mirror and I'm, the, the left side of my cheekbone was so puffed out. I look, I, my eye was completely swollen on the other side. I couldn't see my other eye. My other cheekbone was swollen and I was, I was oh my God, I looked like Rock, Rocky Balboa. I had the shit kicked out of me. And I was in trouble for fighting. I got in trouble for fighting. She didn't even listen to hear my story. I didn't go there. I went to help someone. I went to drop somebody off. A friend of mine tricked me. I went to help them. A friend, someone I thought was my friend, tricked me and brought me to a place where I got jumped. It wasn't my fault and I was blamed for it. And the next day I got called from my friends at school and they wanted to know why I wasn't there and I said, I'm not coming there. I was, I was humiliated. I had my, my ass kicked. And they said, what are you talking about? You broke her jaw and all of her knuckles. And I was like, what? I gotta tell you, the next day, I didn't go to school that day, I looked horrible. But the next day when the, when the swelling went down, I went back to school and I tied her hair on my antenna of my car. That was my victory flag. Years later, I saw that woman's, that girl's sister. I was, I was with my soulmate, a friend, my first boyfriend at the beach. And uh, that's, that girl came up and she saw me and she was just as crazy as her, as her younger sister. She was all hopped up in drugs and she was crazy. And she screamed across the beach, you broke my sister's jaw, you put her in the hospital. And she came running for me and I ran to get the hell out of there. Those two are crazy. So there's an older sister and a younger sister and they're nuts. And I know who this applies to and why this person has run and I get it. But I gotta tell you, no one understood, right? But I got to tell you, I broke her jaw and all of her knuckles. She was in the hospital. And I may have looked like a mess, but I wasn't in the hospital. I was still standing. So this could be symbolic. This could be metaphorical. But it talks about how, um, I got to tell you, years later, I saw that girl. She was the same grade. And the reason that person was angry at me, the one that beat me up or that I beat up or that fought with me, the reason they, they were angry was because she liked a guy and that guy liked me. I, that was it. She was angry. She was embarrassed and she was angry because he liked me and not her. He was just a friend. I didn't even, he was just my friend. I had the shit kicked out of me and she had the shit kicked out of her for no reason. I know that this is relating to certain people because I'm seeing it. I'm being shown by spirit. So, I, I, you know, if you must go fast forward, that's feel free. But this need is, needs to be said. Um, anyway, years later, I saw that girl. You know, she was, she was, she was, all, she, cocaine was her story and mushrooms. She, she was uh, known for that. Her and her family, they were a drug family, big time, hardcore. And uh, I saw her years later and she looks really old really old she looks 10 years older than oh god more than that and her hair is completely silver she looks old she's had a rough life and if anybody that went to high school with me is watching this video you know who this is you know the story and that i'm not lying i don't lie I never lie so here's the internal struggle thinking you're not good enough right thinking you need to improve in some way recognizing that you need to discipline what we have with, within ourselves. Like I said, I've got that ability in me. I can hurt somebody really, really bad. I don't care how big you are. And I'm really not afraid of anyone because I've got spirit at my side. So I'm not afraid of you people at all. But I don't want to come from a place of anger and hate. There's been enough of that. I choose peace. I want love in my life. I want positive energy and positive vibes. And if you don't have that, keep on trucking. That's what... Spirit wants us to hold on to positive energy, positive vibes. They don't want to allow us to allow anyone else to affect us in a negative way because then they have the, we've given them our power and we lose. We want to live this life as long and happy and prosperous and as high vibration as possible. And we do that by 
letting go, dropping hold, letting go of that one end of the sock that the little chihuahua is wanting to play tug of war with. I don't want to play tug of war with you. I don't want to play your games. I'm not going to play your games. We need to remember that we have goodness and darkness in us all, but we embrace the good. We embrace the truth. And the song that we want to sing is not a sad song. Listen to the birds singing out there. It's that yellow warbler. Can you hear him? Her? So happy, cheerful. That's the song we want to sing. And recognize we all have this within us. And we all have the right to find our good qualities, even though we have flaws. We all know our flaws. You don't have to tell me what my flaws are. I know them. I know them way more than you can tell me. I've always been that way. You know, you don't have to tell me. You don't have to get my, it's like my son when he was a child. You didn't have to even yell at him or spank him ever. He knew. We feel bad enough ourselves about the things we do wrong. We don't need anyone else to point them out. So start focusing on your good qualities and not your mistakes because it blinds you to the potential that you have within you. And stop defining yourself only in the negative. Start seeing what I see in you and what spirit sees in you, the potential that you have, that we all have. And that's the discipline that you need to master at this time. The true master finds peace amidst chaos. The true master is able to see that they have the ability to create new ways out of frustrating, frustrating and difficult situations where we can reshape our negative traits into something positive. And we can redefine us, ourselves. This is about taking our life purpose and changing ourselves in a positive way. And it's our time to do this. And then we take our negative experiences and then we use them to teach other people like I do. You think that was a fun memory for me? It was a shitty memory, but man, it shows aspects of my personality. I was always a good girl. I dressed in pearls and, and angora. But I'm on the ground scrapping in the, in the, in the dust with this drugged out nut job who was no doubt, you know, she was probably totally whacked out of her mind on drugs at the time. You know, I'm sure she's got wonderful qualities. You know, at one time we were friends. We were. And I know she probably feels bad as an adult looking back at that. And if not, then she's really sleeping. But even though I have, it shows me that I have strength. And it shows you that the things that you, you, that you have done that you think are negative, that shows your strength. But you can channel that strength in a positive way. You, you can take yourself in a new direction. Even if you were that one that did those things, you can change. Every morning we get up, we get a chance to change our mind and be a different person and do things in a different way. We can come clean with the lies and the manipulation. We can throw ourselves at the mercy of the court and say, please forgive me. You stand a much better chance that way than, than trying to continue to play the game and cover it up. You truly do, especially when you are coming before people that you know come from a place of purity and light. Somebody that's come, walking in spirit's light. You have a much greater chance of being forgiven and, and then you can let that go and put it behind you and, and grow in a positive way. Rumpelstiltskin. Secrets. Oh my God. Well, <sighs> gold. So we know the Rumpelstiltskin story, right? We know how Rumpelstiltskin, well, actually, you know what? Maybe some people don't know this story. I'm always surprised at the people that don't, haven't had parents read them stories as they were, when they were kids. My, my parents, my grandma always did. So let's talk about it then. So this is the tale of a daughter and the daughter's father is very boastful, and he's a miller. So the miller is the one who, um, he has the straw, right? Everybody needs straw, so he's got the straw. And he's very ambitious. And this daughter is compromised in every possible way that she can possibly com be compromised when he tells the world, my daughter can spin this straw into gold. And of course... Spinning, like on a spinning wheel, you know, like, you know, uh, who was it? Rose Red pricked her finger on the spinning wheel. That's a, all, that's a skill in itself, right? The wheel, it goes around and around. But now, what's she going to do? She has to now do what her daughter and what her father has said. Because she's now taken to this castle. And the king wants her to spin this straw into gold. 
She's got to prove this boast that her father said that she could do or he, she's going to be killed in the morning. He lied because of something he did and said. She, her life is at stake. And she's crying because there's no way I can do this. I'm going to die. All of a sudden, this little gnome shows up. This magical gnome, he appears. And he says, I will do this for you. I can do this. This impossible task. And he saves her life. But he doesn't do it for free. He says, because I saved your life, when you have a child, your firstborn child, that child has to be mine. You have to give that child to me. And that, what is this choice? Okay, great. So she either dies or she gives her child away. So she's very sad. But this is what has to happen. This is about a, a person who has a lot of value within them. But the, she's not a superhuman person. She's been told to be a superhuman person, but she's not. And it, this is kind of like the story of if you're not superhuman, you're not a good enough. It's kind of like that song by, by Coldplay. Um, something just like this. I've been reading books of old, tales of old, of Achilles and his heel, and Superman and Batman with his fists. And I, I must admit, I don't see myself upon this list. This person is comparing himself to Superman and Batman and Spider-Man. Spider-Man who weaves these tails and holds them down and Batman who beats him up. And he doesn't feel superhuman. And she says, I'm not looking for a fairy tale. I'm looking for something just like this, like you. Someone who I can kiss and hold. But he didn't see himself as good enough. So this person has been told she's not good enough, or he. This person is beautiful and, and kind, and she knows how to do a, a good, true work. But she doesn't have the money. And now there's this stupid boast that was put forward, and someone has to pay a price. Well, the father that, that lied isn't going to pay the price, right? The daughter's going to pay the price. So this is about when, when people brag about things on, about on your behalf, <clears throat> they're lying, right? You're going to be the one who has to pay the price of their lies. This, this young woman, or in your case it could be a man, has been exploited by the father, by the king. And even by that one who came to help. They said that they were going to help them, but they were taking something for themselves. So, yes, there's an escape clause. Yes, you can get out without dying, but you're going to have to give your firstborn child. What a horrible bargain. So, within this, there's another way. This young woman who spins the gold, she ends up marrying the king. And he doesn't deserve her because look what he, he would have killed her if she couldn't have given him what he wanted. So, they now have a child. And when that child is born, here comes Rumpelstiltskin to take this child. And the mother's begging, please, 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 don't. Take my, my child. So he says, I'll give you something. If you can figure out my name, by morning, you won't have to give me your child. And of course, he's got this magical name, Rumpelstiltskin. Nobody knows his name because he's, he's a spirit. <clears throat> and if you know the name of this magical being, well, you're free, right? So this little spirit gnome is so convinced that no one's ever going to find your name out, then they drop their guard. He drops his guard. He's feeling pretty confident with himself. And she follows him and she watches him. And she hears him singing a little song. She's so smart. She's stealthy. And he's singing. And as he sings, he sings his name. So, there's a lot of stories happening here. Things that I watched and, and actually what happened this morning to me, magically. It's amazing what happened this morning. So, the person within the tale who's struggling against this injustice, this Miller's daughter, right? She's never even given a name other than the Miller's daughter. So, this is about promises or debts that you have inherited. So it's not you that did it, right? Somebody else did something and you inherit this promise. Because of something that was done and a promise was made, you now inherit this. 
So Spirit says to check on the promises or the debts that you have inherited. Be wary of other people that are making promises for work that you can do without consulting you. Oh yeah, they can do this. My landlord did this. My landlord wanted somebody to do something for him. I got to tell you the God's honest truth. I'm just hearing this now. And he said, if you do this for me, he said this to his neighbor. If you do this for me, Sherry will do a reading for you for free. And I thought, what? I didn't say anything at the time. I was sitting here thinking, why would you offer for me to do a reading for him? This is a deal between you and the neighbor. This has nothing to do with me. But he did. He said that because that person is really intrigued with me. Well, I didn't do the reading. And he obviously didn't have the balls, the nerve to ask me because, my God, that's inappropriate, right? So watch out for people making promises for work that you can do without asking your permission first. Know that there's a way out even of the most awful contract, the most awful promise that you may have made, there is a way out of it. There are talents and gifts that you have and you need to value them. This comes along when you feel like you've got an impossible task, when you can't keep a promise. It's an unfair agreement. When, when there's power in, the, in, the, in, in someone's name, you know, it could be like a very elite, wealthy family or a very, uh, you know, very important person. This is where Spirit says there's a way out of an obligation. This is when you have been misrepresented. And Spirit's saying you're going to find solutions. This is knowing that there is power in knowing someone's real name. This is when promises that are made falsely cannot be kept. Promises that you made but to someone else when they lied to you or manipulated you. Those promises will not be kept. And they should not be kept. Because those promises were given under false circumstances. I told you this morning, Spirit gave me names. Showed me everyone and named them in a way that was so beyond magical, I can't even begin to express it. One day I'll share it. Because there was no, I thought at first it had to be a trick. I couldn't believe it. But then three more things happened. Actually, two more things happened. So three things happened all in a row to show me exactly what happened, who was who, and they gave me the names. It was unbelievable. It was just like, holy shit. So don't believe that there isn't a way out. And don't think that when you lie and manipulate, and even when you think that you've got it all figured out, <laughs> think again. Ooh. amazing and spirit has said what you have wanted most is worth waiting for divine timing has been at work in your life this whole time it's all about divine timing things had to happen things had to line up people's stories had to play out sometimes we get caught up in another person's story right it isn't even about us now if you are just wanting love in your life or if this is speaking about love in your life as I said never settle never settle because what you want is worth waiting for whether this is love whether this is uh, work whether this is justice it is worth waiting for a soulmate relationship or a twin soul relationship is requires patience the twin soul is the, the most patience that is the one thing I came into this planet learn having to learn was patience and wow spirit has taught me patience and how to stop myself from lashing out there's a lot of factors involved here and there are free will choices and that's another thing you know I, you may see something clearly and you may know this connection but 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 the other person may have to see things play out maybe you you have been shown but they have not and maybe they have to catch up to you or you may choose that you want someone and this could be a soulmate but that soulmate was somebody that was in your life for a lesson you may say I want that and, and the soulmate has a free, free will choice. They don't want you. It's beyond spirit's control. It's beyond any prayer, any santeria, any bells, spells, binding, crap that you can pull. This one has free will choice. We all have free will choice. So when I do a reading for someone and they say, so what was it looking like? Oh, it looks really good. The guy really cares about you. And yes, he does want to meet you. So we're going to be together then? We're going to be married? And I said, I can't tell you that. Nobody can tell you that. If anybody would ever tell you, a reader 
would ever tell you that far in advance something the truth of that they're lying because everyone has free will choice and at any time someone can change their mind because of outside circumstances outside circumstances befall us all so divine timing is, is it's the universal law and there's a flow to everything and if we try and force ourselves as we've watched in all of these readings or force something to happen we get out of sync we get out of alignment we have to be in alignment with the flow with the energy flow when we're in alignment with spirit then we're on the same vibrational frequency then we come together if we are out of alignment and we try and push and try and maneuver maneuver things and, and manipulate things we create blockages now a lot of people can get forced their way like we saw right and put people in terrible positions and cause and and and, and then get somebody I, there's people that have tricked people into marrying them saying this is my you know this is your baby when it wasn't their baby all along it was their brothers I've watched it I've watched it all in my dreams this one who thought he slept with this person but the person drugged him he never did sleep with them I watched it and I watched as the brother went in and put that person's name down when it was actually his his name it was all false people tricked into marrying people because of obligation and feeling you know obligated to the child probably because they had a child horrible childhood a father that was never there for them and so they figured they'd have to be there not realizing that they were tricked and lied to and manipulated Wow but spirit in the end will make sure things come out the truth comes out it's all about lessons so right now if you're asking about you know am I going to meet my soulmate when will I meet my soulmate you have to not put out that worry into the into the energy into the universe because that's a prayer then you then you put out this doubt and this fear and this worry that's the energy that you pull in so then you're not getting what you're really truly asking for recognize that spirit knows what you're asking for and they are working behind the scenes for you you know we see things I see a lot I'm I mean I'm showing a lot and sometimes I, I get blocked and I'm like why I said to spirit the other day I have prophetic dreams I'm shown visions why can't I see the truth of this you need to show me the truth I deserve the truth and finally they revealed it to me this morning all in one fell swoop but because it was revealed to me at this time doesn't mean it's always revealed because there are lessons that I had to learn and there were things that other people had to go through it's all about divine timing so I also don't know what's going on behind the scenes that my other one is being shown right spirits not just working on my side they're working on the other side too and if I'm given something so incredible such as this as far as a revelation why would that person not be as well and so for you who lie and manipulate and deceive and cheat and steal you think you're so smart you're working on a, on a physical level on a 3d level we are beyond that we're working with spirit that's why I said don't ever be worried about people that have binding spells or work with black magic and witchcraft and who lie and deceive and even if you've got a huge network there are people that the government employs to remote view and to, to plant things into your dreams but you know what we're aware of that and we know how to protect ourselves with the crystals I sleep every night holding my black smoky quartz in my hand I never let go of it I have a seal of protection around me so they may come in and deposit little things into my dreams but spirit guides my dreams I am protected so we know how to protect ourselves and we're not playing with we're not playing parlor tricks we're not playing black magic we're playing truth so right now spirits telling you listen to the guidance that you're getting pay attention a lot of times we get information from spirit that we don't understand but it's there so and, and why do I need to do this I don't know I'm just doing it like when I start talking to you guys and I think to, I start to want to apologize because I think I'm getting personal it's going off no spirit says no go go so there's reasons I'm saying the things that I'm saying and at the time I I know my story right but I don't know why I may have to share this particular story now I just go with it because spirits guiding me to do it I'm a mouthpiece for spirit and then afterwards I get flooded with emails from people oh my god this is my story you have no idea and I'm just like wow because spirit knows how to pull people together so follow what spirit guides you to you're looking for love in your life you want a soulmate relationship in your life follow the guidance that you get follow the, the little nudges that you get even if it doesn't make sense at the time even if it feels like it's not related to what you're asking about because remember look at this path it's like a labyrinth it's very intricate and it's twisty and turny and it doesn't seem like it would be all together but it is it's all connected we are all connected right so 
Allow your intuition to guide you. Follow it and trust it. And trust in the timing of this relationship. This relationship is fantabulous. Get more information. <laughs> Ugh. Wow, I got a lot of information today. So now Spirit's asking for you to get more information. Maybe this is the information you need to get. You need to put all this information together and pay attention. And uh, I just got a message from one of my clients who I've been working with for years. And she would get very frustrated with me because I would tell her things that I was shown and, and none of it happened. And we saw this soulmate and it, they were going to be together. And it, yes, he loved her and blah, blah, blah. And it didn't work. But all of a sudden, this guy came back from, from the past. And it, was, it wasn't who we were looking at talking about, but it was the soulmate. And we were right in what we got. And uh, it was, she was having difficulty and... I said, I see you guys moving into a house together. That's what I'm being shown. It's what he, he's not wanting you to know. He's excited about it. I literally just got a message from her. I just had to tell you that we're moving into a new house July 1st. We just rented space to start our business. Ha, you were right on. So see, a lot of times we get information and from spirit and it may not play out when we think it's going to play out and there may be doubt. But in the end, what we get from spirit is truth. And that's just a really wonderful message for me that it's just more confirmation. I, I know how well I'm guided. And I do listen to what Spirit tells me to share. Because I'm telling you, that person has yelled at me. She's gotten mad at me. She's yelled at me. She's told me, you know, you said this, you said that. And, and I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry. This is just what I, I'll, I, I was told to give you this. And sometimes Spirit asks us to give information. And, and sometimes our higher self tricks us into doing things that, you know, really, it does. It'll trick us into doing things so that other things play out. So... Right now, Spirit's asking for you to get more, gather information. Wow. I'm going to leave it, leave it at that. We're at an hour and 36 minutes, and i got to get to work. I love you guys. Today has been fantastic, i got to tell you. And i got to tell you to my twin, I love you, and you have been worth waiting for, and you are the love of my life. And I have no doubt. I never have. I have always known you were innocent. I've always known who did what. And I hope very soon, if you don't already know, I hope very soon that you know the truth of the situation and who you can trust. And that you are worthy and you deserve the very best. And that you are worth waiting for. And what you have been, what you're going to get has been worth waiting for. And that's my personal message to send out. And I can do it because this is my page. I love you guys. Have a great day.